Now you're rocking with MarshallofRock.com, and we are here with uh, Michael and Mark from Great White. Hey guys, how you doing? All right, we're here at uh, the Chumash Casino Resort, getting ready for a hot show tonight. It's hot outside, but it's going to be hotter on the stage tonight, that's for sure. <laughs> now, guys, I got to tell you something. Uh, I got a friend. I mean, I go way back with you guys from the beginning, and I got a friend. You know, in college radio, we played you guys. I mean, you know, in the late '80s, and I got a, a friend of mine who from there went to work for concrete marketing in New York and and she did some big things but she and she's back in San Diego but she always tells me every time she sees something about you guys that or that I, that you guys remind uh, that you guys remind her of me so oh, okay. you know so I have a connection and affinity for your music so she, cool. you know awesome, she sees something about you guys reminds her of me so uh, you know, I want to tell you guys, you guys have been part of the soundtrack to my life. I really appreciate all the music over the years. Thank you, sir. Thank you for keeping and, us here. Yeah, and, and the new album is amazing as well. Thank you. You know, I know you guys have had some issues with, with some some past band members. You know, not just one, but a couple. And I saw something recently about your old drummer, uh, something on Facebook. But we're not going to get into that. But what I want to talk about is, is uh, you know, You've been with uh, Terry for a while, singing in the band now. And yeah, almost three years. Yeah, almost three years. Gosh, yeah. it's already three years. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Wow, wow. Yeah, but That's a career to... for some people. Yes, <laughs> yes. And you got the album Elation and um, the the new video I just saw recently, too, the Shotgun Willies. It was on the Monsters of Rock. Right, uh, right. Cruise. Yeah. Cool video. Yeah, yeah, thanks yeah you yeah. guys looked like you had a great time on there, huh? That was really yeah, cool. we were talking about that. We, you know, we had filmed the, the live performance and got enough footage, but not really any enough to really make it interesting so you know we all decided let's reach out to the fans and see what they got yeah. you know so just like send in your cards and letters send in, them, you know. send in your home movie yeah so that kind of thing actually yeah. we found out there was a lot of cool stuff that we could enter inter splice with that and give it more of the sense of what the cruise was really all about yeah you know and, and a kind of love letter to Bunsen's of Rock and you know, it's kind of a love letter back to us from the fans. So I mean, it was it was a great experience. I like the look of the video too. It looked like there was a little breezy that night out there on stage. Was was, well, well, we're just wailing down the Atlantic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this thing Rocking was going, man. This thing was going somewhere. Yeah, and uh, you know, and, and so we were dealing with a little. We were on the top deck. That, that was where you know. So there was a little wind, you know. Yeah, very cool video and a very great album. You know, it's a. Uh, you know, it's a it's a testament to you guys that you uh, have continued been in the in the biz for so long. You know, I have a passion for radio and you know the the music biz and, and not only in you know in radio and and and, and your guys side of it has just been completely flipped upside down and and you guys are real survivors. So I commend you for that. And what what would you say though that the difference it pros and cons? I know you've probably been asked this question before, but pros and cons to the music biz when you guys first got in, you know, late 80s, that whole era, and how the structure of, of, of the record companies was, getting signed, getting exposure that way, compared to now where you pretty much take ownership of, of your music and, and it's all about you guys promoting this yourself and obviously touring is, is the major part of the, uh, of the business structure. You've got to be out there playing uh, to make the money. So what, what would you say is the pros and cons to both sides? Well, it's, it's flipped. The thing I remember about getting signed is back in that day, and we were up like the last wave, we were lucky, about our company deciding on a band and believing in the whole concept of artist development. So they knew that, okay, if they do 80 to 100,000 on the first record, that's great. Okay, we're going to push for 250, 300,000 on the second record. So we're going to really try and get them in that right spot on the third record and go gold, you know, and then just hopefully their career will take off from there. But they believed in that part of it. Uh, nowadays, I think what happens is they st stick tons of money into a project, and if it doesn't stick, then they're dropped. So there's no belief in, in, in you know, following an artist, you know, developing an artist through, through right. the years. And I think about all the iconic artists that wouldn't probably be in our lexicon. I mean, oh, gosh, you yes. think about Bob Seger, you think about U2, Springsteen, yeah. exactly. Uh, bon Jovi even took three records to pop. I mean, so right. uh, it's it's a lot of things that happened for us um, that was different in in that regard. I mean, the the, the, the one pro of, of uh, being able to do a record yourself now, I think it costs a little bit less money to do. Um, so you can start really promoting that um, but yeah, it's more the guerrilla marketing now. I mean, you have to use the web, and if you don't, you're kind of lost. And it was a hair more real back, 
you know, in the early days when, and I've even heard David Grohl talk about this, you know, when, when bands are thrown together, guys that don't even know each other, okay, here's the band, here's the music, go, go, go. Yeah. You know, instead of uh, developing on your own before the record company, you, you know, goes through their development, it, it's, uh, you know, being in the garage, developing yourselves. I mean, like, look at Metallica in 1980. They weren't the greatest thing in the world. I mean, they had to get better. You know, they got to be better guitar players, a better drummer. Uh, you know, so there's a, a band development that happens as yeah. well. I mean, yeah. I was crummy as heck, and I might, yep. I'm still working on it. <laughs> I mean, in my, in my little band, when I was first coming up with my own songs, and I remember telling my mom when I was 15, I'm going, everything I, every song I write sounds like Black Sabbath, like crying to her, like crying. Like, I, I can never sound like, you know, anything different. It all sounds like Black Sabbath. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and just, you know, it, it's, it's trial and error. You keep going and going and going and, you know. Yeah. Well, I saw you guys, uh, one of the first times I saw you, and I'm going to bring up a memory. I'm going to ask you if you guys remember any specific shows or instances and how that works with you guys. But I saw you guys in 1990. And MSG and a band called Havana Black opened for you guys at the Arlington Theater in Santa Barbara, which is a great little venue for, Dave, for gigs. And do you guys remember that, or do you, how does that work with Dave, you guys? Do you Dave, 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 I'm gonna say that's either March 9th or March 10th, uh, 1990. Really? And the day before, we played at the Orange Show Pavilion in San Bernardino. And then we traveled from Santa Barbara. Do you remember me? Out to I met Mesa, you guys. Out to Mesa. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the Rain Man. Oh, okay. that's, that's, that's impressive. That's impressive. You can tell you any that's day. Impressive. So go home and look at your ticket stub, and I'll be within a week. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure I will. Well, all right. All right. So, so you do. You, you So he keeps track of all that. Do you, yeah. As far as you go, do you remember like instances on stage, or how does that relate? Like you remember, oh, that gig was so amazing. Uh, do you oh, remember the gig, or do you remember the usually? If yeah, it's a, it was a disaster or something that really, really good, really, really good that happened. But, uh, you know, it, it's kind of tough when you're, Michael just has a great memory, but um, when you're playing arena, especially the arena tours, because it, you're basically going from the bus to the back of the arena and from city to city yeah. to where a lot of straight from the bus to the hotel and many of them looks exactly the yeah same. they look a lot alike yeah. so and the stage is the same every night because you're traveling with the stage and you know all gets put up so i mean everything looks very very similar yeah. after a while you're bringing the stage with you you know that so are you guys sharing the stage with van halen at this uh rock usa i'm event? not sure if it's the same day i don't, I don't really think we're playing yeah. the same day oh yeah. okay. they're, they're, they're playing on uh, we're playing on friday they're playing saturday okay. something or okay our opposite of that okay have you guys ever seen uh, shared the stage have been, been on tour with them or I, we've know? never played a show with van halen but i grew up with them uh literally saw them when i was probably 16 years old for one dollar uh three blocks from my house and uh you know, followed them. Uh, they were the best band around. I followed them all, saw several shows of, of theirs, and uh, saw their development. And, you know, from the first time I saw them, they were playing uh, Bad Company, uh, you know, all all covers, and uh, maybe an original or two. And, and when they got signed, that really was inspiring. And, and they, they played, Almost every night, they were either playing cover songs or on the weekends doing a showcase thing with their original song music. And that was inspiring to me, their work ethic, even more than maybe their musicianship, was their work ethic. They worked harder than everybody. And that, that was inspiring. So obviously that was inspiring for you. What else, you know, seeing all that stuff in Southern California growing up, obviously big inspiration on your musical life. Uh, what other instances for you too, Michael, uh, you know, made you want to pick up an instrument, made you, uh, you know, decide to become a, a musician? Well, I mean, over time, the first thing that hit me upside the head and just changed my whole world, flipped it upside down, was seeing the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. And then seeing the Rolling Stones on Ed Sullivan, it was like, it just got closer and closer than seeing the doors. It was like there was no way that I was not going to be a musician after like connecting with what they did and how it made people react. It was just something that that appealed to me in my psyche as something I really wanted to attempt to do. You know, and you never know 
if you're going to be a success at anything you try, all you can do is try. But I mean, when you're young and there's nobody telling you you can't do something, you have balls of steel. So you go out there and you just throw it out there and you go for it and you keep trying to keep trying to keep trying to break that wall down. And after a while, it, it finally becomes something that is intrinsic to your to your life. And, and every day you get up and you do what you do. And, and that's one of the things that I've been lucky enough to say that, you know, we're, we're in our middle 50s now and say, hey man, we get to wake up and we're still doing what we absolutely wanted to do. And we're making a living at it. How blessed are we? Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's really, yeah. you know, what drives us to that's get up fantastic. and do it. That's fantastic. So, um, uh, also, as far as, uh, you know, the influences uh, in, from your past, you know, you talked about all the bands that you saw growing up. When was the, in, the, the instance where you guys realized or took it as when Great White made it? You know, is there an instance where you could remember where you were like, oh yes, we finally, we're here, we've made it. Is there, is there something that, that hit you upside down? Definitely, uh, you know, um, I think when Rock Me was kind of taken up, it, it felt, you, you could kind of feel there was something going on here, you, you know what I mean? Especially uh, traveling around with White Snake on that tour and hearing ourselves on the radio and stuff almost everywhere you go and the songs kind of obviously that was kind of a and and the song in general it, um, we really fell into something with our dynamics uh, our the blues influence coming out um, you know it, it, we lodged into something on that record to where you know, it, it felt like something it really good. Did. Then you followed up. One of those once been twice shot. Yeah, and that just took you to another level. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, one of those crazy moments was being on stage at the LA Forum, yeah. April seventh, nineteen eighty, yeah. with White Snake. <laughs> yeah, and you know that, that was hard. that was our manager's birthday. We had received um, Ampex Golden Reel Awards. If you sold five hundred thousand records and you used Ampex tape, you got that. And the same day, uh, Bobby Watson came on stage and. Uh, gave us all certified platinum records from Capitol. So it was our first platinum record. Yeah. Playing to a sold out hometown show, getting that, getting both awards. Just the headiness of, of it all. You felt like you were high without ever getting anywhere close to any kind of drink or drug. It was like, it was it was one of those moments where you just like- Not to mention this is, this is where the Lakers play and this is yeah, like a too. teenager dream. I mean, you know, you, you saw Led Zeppelin there, I, you know. You've seen all your heroes there, and when you're playing there, it's surreal, and you're just, you just can't believe it. And this is the place where I saw Ted Nugent swinging through the building. Oh, yeah. So it's it's pretty neat, um, and and especially to be able to share it with your friends. Like you know, you, know, you get all your friends in, and they got these killer seats and everything. Guys, you went to seventh grade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. This Look guy, at the crowd. This guy oh, kicked my butt in seventh grade. Yeah. Like I got to fight with that dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. So when you get to share it with all the, your friends and family, it's you know it's awesome. That's fantastic. I, another that leads me to another question. I always ask this: uh, Is there one specific person in the music biz that you just cannot believe I'm meeting this person? Is there someone that was significant for you that way, or either one of you? Easy for me. Yeah. Um, and I've met most of my heroes, but um, I have to throw two out there, and that was Johnny Winter when I got to meet him because I actually spoke with him on his bus, and it was only because we we had a tour manager that was his tour manager for five years, and he hooked that up for me, and um, and I, five years ago I met Billy Gibbons, and he was the most soulful, down to earth, coolest dude in the world. Emailed me personally invited me to shows with my wife, uh, you know, totally gave me the time of day, and, you know, listened to me, like, how important his music was. I mean, how many memories he created for me, you know, playing Waiting for the Bus in the apartment building with my little stupid band, and, and stuff like that, and, and just, you know, you feel a certain way when you think of certain songs, at least I do, and that's why I relate to fans so well because I'm such a huge fan myself. I'm just a geeky ass fan, you know, that that digs music, and I have my all my heroes and everything. So, 
you know, when I got to meet those two guys, and I met several uh, guitar players that are, were my heroes, you know, growing up. Yeah. What about you? My, my geek moment as far as another performer was probably Ringo Starr. And to be able to get a picture with him, which is really unusual because he just does not like to take pictures. So that was a big coup on the part of a friend of mine who used to do the private sessions on A&E. He was on her show, and uh, she arranged it. Didn't tell me who was going to play on the show that day. She said, we have to be in New York. And she said, come down for the taping. I've got somebody I want, I want you to meet. Right. And I was like, you know, flabbergasted. And another guy, because I'm in the studio as an engineer and producer or co-producer, I, uh, one of the guys that I worked with on the way up was Ken Scott, who was a Beatles engineer. Um, worked on David Bowie, Supertramp, Missing Persons, Mahavishnu Orchestra, Dixie Dregs, George Harrison, I mean, the list goes on and on. I learned so much from him, you know, as far as being able to implement that part of what I do into hopefully helping the band. That it was probably those two guys. That's, that's, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's really awesome. So the rest of the summer, uh, is this like the first gig the, for the next leg of the summer? I mean, I, I looked at the recent gigs. You guys have been, oh, this is just a continuance. Of, you haven't had a break before this gig? No, uh, I mean, oh, okay. a little bit. Uh, you guys are nonstop on the road, months, aren't you? Right? Oh, I mean, you know, we're quiet usually in February and March, oh, okay. you know, and we did Monsters Rock, and then we did a little bit in April, but usually May starts to turn around, we start doing more gigs. And in June, I think we did seven, and this month, I think we would do 11 or 12, and August, the same thing. And you got a full and, slate and, and summer, then don't you? Yeah. we got a little, we're a little quiet in September, the first part anyway, but the back end's busy, and then all, almost all of October is looking like it's filling up. So uh, I guess May to like October, November is pretty much like the high time. Slim. You know. Yeah. So any other projects coming up? You guys going to plan on doing another album? Well, yeah, definitely. We're yeah. going to do another album. We've, yeah. we've been talking about it. We're, we're, um, let me do something very rock. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, we never know what, what's going to happen. At least it won't be mock. <laughs> a mock piece. All right. Well, you know what? I really appreciate the time, you guys. And Thanks. I got to say, we're looking forward to the show tonight. It's going to be amazing. And once again, thank you for all the memories and all the great music that you've brought in and the joy you've brought in, not only me, but our viewers and uh, and, and all the, the, the folks that are frequenting my website. And uh, I just, I really appreciate it, man. I mean, Thanks. You know, I. Great White's one of my bands. And thanks to all the fans out there. Um, we, you know, I, I always say that the Great White fans are the most loyal fans in the world, but it's really true. I, I mean, I know other bands have loyal fans, but it, it's amazing how long our fans have been by our side, and, and uh, we're grateful for that. Thank you so much. That's, that's amazing. All right, yeah, so check out greatwhiterocks.com uh, for all the tour dates and everything Great White. Follow them on Facebook and Twitter. So you can find out and follow him. Be my friend. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Be Mark's friend. And yeah, Michael's friend. And, and go see him in concert this summer. Check out the website and, and find a date near you and, and go check him out. Support the great band and the great music that they keep bringing us. And they're going to keep bringing us. You're right? oh, a lot longer. Yeah. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks Thank you so man. much.